Hello and welcome to VLOOKUP LEFT. My name is Jeff, I'm glad you're here. Let's just jump right in. Now, if you've used the VLOOKUP function, you know that the lookup column is expected to be in the leftmost column within the range, meaning it's gonna look for a value in the leftmost column within the range, and once it finds its match, then it will shoot to the right to return the related value. And this means that the return value has to be positioned to the right of the lookup value. But what happens if that's not the case? Well, one option would be to manually reposition the column structure, and that's not necessarily always efficient. In this video, we're gonna look at three different ways to do a lookup that returns a value that lies to the left of the lookup column. All right, let's head to Excel. Okay, now the first option is to use XLOOKUP instead of VLOOKUP. This is a great option if the XLOOKUP function is available to you in your version of Excel. To find out if it is, simply head to any cell, type equals XL, and if you see XLOOKUP in the pop-up, Good news, you have access to this function, and this is the one that I would use instead of VLOOKUP. Equals XLOOKUP. We wanna go find this, comma, in here, okay? Comma, and then we wanna return a value that is to the left of that lookup column. Close the function and enter. And so 101 returns accounting, that looks good. Let's see if 200 works, 200 returns operations, and that looks good. So that's the first option, use XLOOKUP instead of VLOOKUP. But what if we don't have XLOOKUP in our version of Excel? Well, that takes us to the next option. Now let's take a look at using index match instead of VLOOKUP. This is a great option when our version of Excel doesn't have XLOOKUP. The formula looks like this, equals index. The first argument is the return column. That is the column that has the value we want to return. In this case, it's our department column. And then we do a comma, and then we write the match function. Now, with the match function, there are three arguments. We wanna go find this, comma, and then we define the lookup column, which is this. And then a comma, zero for exact match. Close the match function, close the index function, and hit enter. And now we get 101 accounting, 101 accounting. Let's see if 200 works, operations, and we got it. So that's the second option, using index and match instead of VLOOKUP. But is there a way to actually do an actual VLOOKUP left? And the answer is, yeah, there is. Let's go to the next example. All right, so we actually want to use the VLOOKUP function in this case. So there's a couple of helper functions that enable us to do this. The first is choose columns, and the second is choose. Let's see what these two helper functions actually do. First, let's do choose columns. And what we say here is, from this range, which columns do I want to return and in which order? So I could go return column one and two, close function and enter, and that's gonna return the first column and then the second column, but I could also change the order. So I could say return the second column and the first column, enter. And so it's enabling us to look at an entire range and then pick and choose which columns I wanna return and in which order. So I could simply use choose columns as the lookup range argument in VLOOKUP. So let's take a look, equals VLOOKUP. I wanna go find this, comma, in where? In the range that's returned by choose calls. So we go with choose calls, here's our range. I wanna return the second column from that range and then I wanna return the first column from that range. If I find a matching value, return the value from the second column within that range, and zero for exact match. Close the function and enter. And now we get 101 accounting, and let's test 200. It should be operations, which it is. So that's one of the helper functions that we can use when we really wanna use VLOOKUP to do this. The other helper is choose. So let's see what that looks like. Equals choose. So with the choose function, we actually want it to return two columns. So we need to create an array for this index num argument. How do we do that? We simply enclose them in curly braces. So curly brace, and then we wanna return the first and the second arguments. Then we define the first column that we want it to return, which is gonna be this one, comma, and then we define the second column that we want it to return, which is this one. Close function and enter. And as you can see, the choose function, when used like this, operates very much like the choose calls. And the good news about using choose is it's been available for decades. So if your version of Excel doesn't have the choose calls function, you can use the choose function like this because it's been around for a long time. So now we just use that to write our VLOOKUP. Equals VLOOKUP. We wanna go find this, comma, in where? In the range returned by the choose function. We want it to return the first argument and the second argument. And the first value argument is 
this, and the second value argument is this. Close the choose function, comma, and we're back in VLOOKUP. We want to return the value from the second column and zero for exact match. Close the function and enter. 200 is operations, that looks good, and 101 should be accounting, which it is. Hey, Excel user, if you ever need to create summary reports, check out my pivot table for beginners video. It starts at the beginning and shows how to store the data transactions in a table, and then how to summarize those transactions with a pivot table report. I hope it helps unlock the incredible power of pivot tables. So those are three ways to do a lookup that returns a value that falls to the left of the lookup column. The first was XLOOKUP, the second was index match, and the third used VLOOKUP. Hey, hopefully this helps. Thanks so much for joining me. Have a great day. This video is a production of Excel University. 